the devil will attack your affection if he attacks your affection then you have no choice but to love the devil and you will find that to become an agent of the devil and so the second area of moral compromise is the area of affection what do you love it's a requirement of the men that god uses he said if a man loves not the lord christ it's not just somebody that god rejects he said it's an accost product anathema maranatha it's your love for god because when a man's morality is intact his affection is towards god when a man's morality is affected his affection turns away from god when a man's affection drifts away from god there are five dimensions of lust that you will find in that man the first is he will start loving knowledge and not life that is the first sign of babylon the first sign of babylon is pursued for knowledge and not life you know why because he wants to seek false relevance it doesn't matter if god approves of him but he just wants to be relevant among men and what will make him relevant is knowledge see what god calls knowledge is actually not facts and information is life he said this is life eternal john 17 3 that you may know him the only true god so god's definition of knowledge is actually life and so any life any knowledge that is only mental will perform and that pride becomes the reason why god will reject you but when knowledge becomes about life knows that affection is about god there are many who listen to message because they want to hear something to preach there are many who read the bible because they want a new verse to preach but when you find a man who loves God, he opens the scripture to find God. And so his pursuit is not knowledge. His pursuit is life. Because God is not giving knowledge apart from himself. God is actually pouring forth himself. It is the issuing of God into you that becomes the light in your life. He said the life is the light of men. So knowledge is supposed to spear out of life. And so any man who pursues life, we have knowledge but it's possible to pursue knowledge and be void of life if you discover that your pursuit now is about knowing so many things and so much and not necessarily about growing in intimacy with god know that your affection has been compromised this is why people who don't have affection for god they are just curious about everything they are everywhere seeking relevance and not in god's presence when a man is pursuing life Know that his affection is still pure. The second thing that happens to you if your love for God is compromised is you begin to love money. And all of these things are born out of the insufficiencies and the vacuums of the soul. Because you know that what completes you is no longer there. So you are looking for something else to complete you. And so you know that money has purchasing power and so you want to have a lot of money in order to buy a lot of things to satisfy the vacuum of your soul and so the bible said in first timothy chapter 6 verse 10 it said the love of money is the root of all evil and men whose affection have been compromised they spend all their life pursuing money they can walk three shifts in a day in order to have money but they cannot stay in god's presence for 30 minutes and you now see the agenda of god dying 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 because men choose money over god the third thing that happens to your affection if it is compromised is that you become a lover of pleasure second timothy chapter 3 verse 4 when it was giving us the signs of the end time he said men shall be lovers of pleasure so they can keep the routine of watching football every week for 10 years they can keep the routine of going clubbing every friday night for six years but tell them we have vg every wednesday they will attend the first one after that one they say oh no, you know is you something has happened to their energy energy has been depleted if it is god they are weak and weary but if it is something that stirs their emotion they will be there if it finishes they are angry why did this thing finish so soon when it has to do with pleasure it becomes so soon but when it is god why is it taking so long know that something is wrong with the affection the affection has been compromised and if the devil gets the gate of your love he can make you a slave through lust that's why god never finds many men the second standard of morality is purity of affection god must be your first love all your energy must be channeled towards god in deuteronomy 6 verse 5 he said you will love the lord with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind and jesus reiterated it and added all your strength lovers of pleasure number five number four rather 
When people's affections are compromised, they become lovers of self. First Timothy 3 verse 2, self. The guy can afford to be in the gym for four hours, five hours. He needs a big chest. He finishes from the gym in the evening in his bedroom, 30 press up. They will do press up, they will carry rope and skit. He will all kinds of shape, you know. There's nothing wrong with Jimmy. There's nothing even wrong in having a good look. Don't get me wrong. It is healthy. There are those who gym for health. There are those who gym to appear good. All of that is wonderful. But if Jimmy takes the time of prayer, and if you spend more time to gym than to read the word of God or pray, something is wrong. It means you are a lover of self. A lady can sit down every two, two weeks for seven hours to make million braids. That they call it million braids. Are you not afraid? She can sit down for three days and make her hair. Lose it in seven days. Make another one. She will never complain that she's tired sitting. So long as they are making her hair. And again, there's nothing wrong in looking beautiful by making your hair. But the question is, how many hours can you sit in God's presence? How many hours? If he has to improve your look, you can spend the whole week there. No problem. But if he has to improve your spirit, you become tired. The Bible said, bodily exercise profits. It's not against it, but he said it profits little. Because compared to God's operation, that is little. No matter what you derive from it, be it health, be it fitness, be it good look. He said all of that is little. He said but godliness. He profited much, both in this life and in the life that is to come. And so while you are building yourself in the physical, make sure you don't spend more resources, more time and more energy to build your physical self than your spiritual self. Because if you spend more time, more energy and more resources to build your physical self, it means you are a lover of self. A man who is a lover of God spends much, much more time to build his spirit because he knows that God's first point of contact is his spirit. In fact, the reason his body is necessary is because his body is the legal requirement for him to function in this realm. So he's taking care of his body so that his body can be used to serve God. When I pursue health, it's because I need to be healthy to go for evangelism. When I pursue health, it's because I need to be healthy to bring the gospel. If I'm not strong, I can't be talking here for two hours. The reason I'm able to talk for two hours is because I'm strong. And so when you find me, Jimmy, it's good to look good. It's good to be healthy. But at the end of the day, all of that is converted to give glory back to God. Lovers of self are not lovers of God. They can spend time with their body, but they cannot spend time with God. That's why God can come to a whole nation and find no man. Because love has been compromised. You say, what manner of men are these? They are men that uphold moral standards. I'm showing you things that the devil uses to get us. Many things. You can't count how many millions were shot because they went clubbing. Lovers of self and pleasure. You can't find how many millions were wrecked because they developed their body more than their spirit. When you start developing your body more than your spirit, you become a victim of demons. Good to develop your body, but first priority to your spirit. Because when spirits come, it's your spirit that will rise up. And if your spirit is weak and your body is strong, you are a slave. So you have people with strong body, well furnished, well developed, well fed, but spirit is lanky and dying. And so demons ride on them. They become slaves and puppets of spirits. And so God can't find men. He keeps looking. He finds lovers of money, lovers of pleasure, lovers of self. He keeps finding people, but no one is affectionate towards him. He said, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. He said, they that love the world, the love of God is not in them. First John 2, 15 to 16. In James chapter 4, verse 4, he said, you are adulterers and adulteresses. He said, know yet not that friendship with the world is enmity with God. He said, he that loveth the world is an enemy of God. And what is in the world? The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. He said, they that do these things, they will perish. 
He said, but he that loveth God, he said, he abideth forever. You want to be God's man, you must spend time to sanitize your emotion. This is why some of us who know that loving God means something to us, we don't see everything. We don't watch everything. We don't hear everything. Because man is spontaneous. What you feed yourself with is what you become. I know that I have many tendencies that if I walk on, can turn me to an alien to God's government. And so what I do is I withdraw. He said, come out from among them. Once in a while, I can watch football if I'm tired, but I'm not a fanatic. Because I know from fanatism, it can lead to insult. It can lead to animosity. It can lead to violence. And so, because I am not better than those who enter violence, I avoid fanatism. Because it will be pride for you to think you are better than the guy who became a fanatic and started making trouble because of football and became violent. There is a state he has allowed his soul to get to. That's why he's violent. Any one of us can be violent if we allow our soul to enter that state. And so in order not to enter that state, I avoid fanatism. I know that my spirit cannot bear the weight of certain level of moral decadence. That's why I don't go clubbing. They say, if you go, you will relax. I don't need that kind of relaxation. If I want to relax, I sleep in my room. My nerves will calm down. Even WHO tells that sleep is a good form of relaxation. I don't have to sit on a bottle of beer to relax. Somebody say, there's nothing wrong in drinking alcohol. I don't know the state that will make me drunk. It can be just one glass. And because I know that drunkenness is a sin, and drunkenness can lead to foolishness, the best thing for me to do as a priest is to avoid it. Because priests don't take alcohol. If I need to be excited, if I need to be rejuvenated, there's another technology of drunkenness. He said, be not drunk with wine, where it is in excess. But be filled with the spirit, speaking to yourself in psalm, in hymns, in spiritual song, making melody in your heart to the Lord. And so instead of taking alcohol, I rather take talks. Oh, yeah. For me, I have understood that man is weak. A spirit that empowers men. And so I don't want the wrong empowerment. And so many people are celebrating birthdays. They say, man of God, come. I say, sorry, I'm busy. But I can support you. I told them the story in church three weeks ago. My neighbor was doing engagement. This is somebody that furnished my office, furnished every, every, is an interior decorator. Everything I do, I just give instruction, he does it. Even the house I'm, I'm living in, he was the one who got it, furnished everything, I just came and entered. He wants to get married. That's a good part of his life. And it's good to support him. I made a mistake. I would have supported only with money. He said he was doing engagement. That he, he please, I should come. After all, I'm the one who prays for him and things work in his life. I was carried away. I felt like a man of God. I said, let me stand there and give covering. <laughs> covering. And now followed him to the engagement. We came early because the engagement was eight. And the plan was for us to come 7.30. So that when the bride is coming in, you know, surprise, surprise. When we entered, the whole place was white. I think they called it snow something. The roof, they padded it with cotton wool. So when the light is blaring on it, it looked heavenly. I said, wow, this person must be somebody that the Holy Ghost ministers to. When it was 7.45, some music started coming from the background. Some strange music. I said, what kind of vibration am I listening to like this? I whispered to my wife because... I go with my wife for security purpose. What's going on here? The moment it was 7.50, 7.55, I didn't know that other people too had an activity there. I think another lady was doing birthday. 14 ladies walked in. That was when I discovered Jezebel will never die. She will never die. It's a revelation that Jezebel will be killed. Some of them, they gown, they walk. This, my suit, is longer than it. They, they call it gown. But this suit is longer than it. Some of them, the whole cloth was like a tie. That they just tie around themselves. The whole chest. I thought it looked like arrow. This kind of people exist. Even the one that wore long stuff. The gown was torn to this point. If she stretches her leg, the whole lap comes out. And they are shameless. I turned my chair and faced the one, told my wife, please, when this brother come, apologize on my behalf. While I was thinking of what to tell the, the relative, my phone ran. I said, sorry, somebody need prayer. I went into the car and locked myself there. I didn't come out. You know what? 
those pictures. In fact, when you go home after something, you will still go and meditate on scripture because they planted those pictures in your soul. The day that something happens and your soul is weak, the devil will now resurrect those pictures and make a frame in your soul. Maybe somebody who is close to you will die and then you are grieving. You are in serious grief. That time that you are low in energy, the devil will now begin to bring pictures. That's when you will remember the footstep that the first lady walked into the hall with. And then you will drive out for fresh air. You will start looking for them. It's when you are in the hotel, you will now ask yourself, is it a person that is here? The reason many fail is because they took for granted the need to guard their soul. They say, guard your heart with all diligence. Out of it are the issues of life. The men God uses, they master how to guard their affection. They master it. They master it and they guard it with jealousy. Even movies, some of us don't watch again. Anytime that I feel like keeping time with movies, I go and look for where they recap them. I click one and hear a recap and close it and go. Because it's not a sin, but the soul is porous. And when things enter your soul, it may enter in one second, but it may take seven months to come out. Because when it enters your soul, your soul will grow into it. And it will be intertwined. The same way the HIV virus enters your white blood cell and mingles with the white blood cell and grows with it. That's how the soul is corrupt. And then you will discover the time in the place of prayer that you used to enjoy will become too long. You that used to pray for three hours and you are sweating and you are charging, suddenly 30 minutes becomes too long. You are wondering, why is it now difficult to pray? Other things have entered your soul. They are called weights. They are not a sin, but they are weights. And that's why the Bible says to turn aside every weight that besets you. What manner of men do God use for his agenda? They are men who are passionately in love for him with him. Jesus said, the seed of my father's house has eaten me. The reason you can manipulate people, marginalize people, use people and oppress people is because there's no compassion. And so one of the gates through which moral values are destroyed is a state of compassionlessness. If you don't have compassion anymore, you are capable of anything in the negative. And so when God wants to keep his servant morally in check, he always services his compassion. How do, what do you feel towards the people? Are you, are you passionate for the work of God because you want them to realize their destiny? That's what God weighs. And then brokenness, which is the mother of it all. He said, God resists the proud, but he giveth more grace to the humble. The day you feel you are too important, that's the day you are disqualified. The day you think God cannot do without you. The day you think you are the best, that's the day you are finished. The way God will prove to you is that God will pick the person that doesn't look like it at all and use that person to do 10 times what you have done in a shorter time to prove to you that the reason he kept you was messy, not because you were better. And so you want to be that man that God has found. That man that God will use. These moral standards, God will never compromise on them. The culture and rich in natural resources, as far as heaven is concerned, that territory is barren. And so see what God said, because he found no man, in verse 31 he said, Therefore have I poured out my indignation upon them, and I consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, said the Lord. So a whole territory was destroyed because no man was found. Maybe there were diamonds there. Maybe there was gold there. Maybe the agricultural productivity of that land was very high, but there was no man. And if God's agenda cannot be expressed, the territory is a desolate territory. And so what brings value to a territory is first of all, the availability of men. And when we talk about men, we are not talking about people that breathe oxygen. We are talking about people that can connect to the frequency of heaven and find out what God is doing in the now. Because at all times, God is doing something. Can you imagine that God wanted to destroy the earth and waited for 100 years? Because he wanted Noah to be saved. Noah took 100 years to build the ark and God waited. In those 100 years, they gave birth to men. Marriages took place. Agricultural things were happening. But as far as heaven was concerned, the earth was already doomed. The moment Noah finished and entered the ark with animals that God wanted to carry to the next dispensation, the earth was destroyed. So what makes a generation relevant is not the population. It's the agenda of God. The degree to which they can fulfill the agenda of God 
is what makes that generation relevant and so for every generation god has an agenda and so whether we will be relevant or not is to the degree that we align with god's agenda and so the reason god will not stop looking for a man is because people must find his agenda for every dispensation and for every generation and unfortunately very few find god's agenda very few find god's agenda a conference like this is put together because a desperate people are crying and they are saying lord whatever it takes for me to be your man i will be that person 